continue to stand for peace. Welcome to Switzerland. It's official! We're going to Basel for Eurovision 2025. We are so stoked about this. Basel looks like an amazing city. What do you guys think? Now I'm going to take you through some of the latest news for Eurovision 2025. Let's go! In 1956, here in Switzerland, a promise was made to create an international TV show that celebrates music friendship and togetherness. Of course, the first news is we are going to Basel. We just had a press conference. I'm going to take you through what went down. The press conference were held in a government building in Basel. Most of the talking were in German, French, like I didn't understand much. Ich glaube, da haben wir sehr gut. Ja. Was gab jetzt den Ausschlag? Chèvre, Euro. Nachmittag noch einen Kaffee genommen und gesagt. In dem Sinn zum Beispiel auch ein Euro. So I'm just going to give you what I know. Dokumenten, das werden wir jetzt in die Stadt raustragen die nächsten Tage und Wochen. There has been an application process of which of the cities in Switzerland get the honor of hosting Eurovision 2025. And there's been an intense competition between the different cities for the last couple of weeks. But is there any point, Moritz, where you said this was really special, they did great in, in Basel, or was it really the package? Now that we know that it is Basel, uh, the two teams or the different teams are going to come together to figure out the logistics of how this is going to work. Now, why Basel? In the beginning, we're looking for the best city to host the Eurovision Song Contest. This is complicated because it's the biggest entertainment event on earth. You don't decide that with one criteria. What makes the difference are a lot of small little details. They and said that the reason was because it is a pocket-sized metropolis, as they say. It is uh, full with culture, art, uh, it's very liberal and um, they have a lot of culture to offer. Another point is that they have high living standards and that it is on the border to France and Germany. So their slogan of crossing borders is uh, what made this the choice in the end. Also, they had have a lot of big stadiums to host the Eurovision show. ESC Factful makes amazing content, check her out. She made a video regarding why they chose Basel. These are the reasons why Basel was chosen to host Eurovision 2025 in Switzerland. Generally, the Eurovision host city needs a good nearby international airport and a city that provides good infrastructure with hotels to accommodate delegation, staff and guests. The city also needs a suitable indoor venue with a press center in the vicinity and it has to be available for about two months for all preparations. According to the Eurovision executive supervisor, Martin Österdal, Basel was the better choice because of its location at the crossroads of Europe, which makes it the ideal setting for an event that celebrates the power of music to connect people across borders. He also stated that Basel reflects the spirit of the Eurovision Song Contest with its unique blend of tradition and innovation and praises the main venue of 2025, Sankt Jakobshalle, to be exceptional and hospitable for delegations, artists and fans. Plus, it's a great opportunity to bring Eurovision to the German-speaking part of Switzerland for the first time. Do you think Basel was the right choice? Came up in the comment section during this press conference that they're going to use at least 7 million euros on safety measures. And also the tickets, as you know, as a Eurovision fan, or if you haven't been to Eurovision and just want to get into it, if you want tickets to the shows, it comes in waves and it's predicted that the first wave will be at the end of this year. So pay attention. Personally, I think it's amazing that Basel won. It is one of the smallest cities that has ever hosted Eurovision. And I think that will be a good thing to just have a little center where everybody can come together and celebrate music, friendships and inclusion. It looks really nice. It is very expensive though, but at the same time, I'm happy it was Basel. I think it is a nice city to showcase Switzerland. It's going to be nice to celebrate the 69th edition of Eurovision back at its roots. Yeah, I hope to see you there. In Basel in Switzerland, which is a beautiful town. And now over to some other news. Jules Klein's case was dropped, as many of you probably know. This did not come as a shock for us in the fan community. 
There was a lot of tension last year at Eurovision and uh, from what we heard went down, it seemed really unreasonable to disqualify him. And uh, now that the case is dropped, we also think that it's important with safety measures, but regarding the tension that was there at that time and that he made us like a suggestion or a gesture that was aggressive, that shouldn't be enough to disqualify an artist in my opinion. But I hope the EBU has learned from this and that they will have a little bit more of a nuanced approach in this year to come because there will probably be a lot of tension this year as well. But we're very happy that his case were dropped and we hope he will come back maybe for Belgium. There's some rumors, we'll see. And there's a new country, Montenegro is going to come back. Welcome back Montenegro, we're so happy to have you back. There's also very exciting news that Montenegro will have their new national final. The broadcaster in Montenegro is with their own words saying that a representative will be selected through a national competition called Montesong which will be organized in collaboration with the Association of Performing Artists and Entertainers of Montenegro. This partnership is designed to encourage as many Montenegrin performance, performers as possible to participate. Our goal is to promote new musical talents and reconnect with the wider European audience. We believe this will mark the beginning of a new and successful era for Montenegro at the Eurovision Song Contest. We're so happy to have you back and uh, good luck with your new national final, Montenegro. Next up, we're going to talk a little bit about the countries that have shown their interest for Eurovision 2025. So far, the countries that have expressed their interest is Albania, Austria, Azerbaijan, Belgium, Croatia, Cyprus, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Israel, Italy, Latvia, Lithuania, Luxembourg, Malta, Montenegro, Norway, Portugal, San Marino, Serbia, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. This means that all the big five countries have expressed their interest and will continue in this competition. Compared to last year, when we had 37 countries participating, we now have 26 so far. Uh, which means that we have approximately 70% you know, uh, filled spaces compared to 2024. And Eurovision can potentially take in 44 countries by now, meaning that we have approximately, well, compared to who we have so far, 26 of 44 participating countries or potential participating countries, meaning that we have like a, almost a 40% capacity open if other countries want to join in. There's also some speculation that maybe Japan would like to join. By now, there's uh, 13 pending countries for this year's competition. Those are Armenia, Australia, Czechia, Estonia, Georgia, Greece, Iceland, Ireland, Moldova, Netherlands, Poland, Slovenia, and Ukraine. All of these countries are so loved in the Eurovision community and we really hope that we will see them back in Eurovision 2025. There's also some speculations that Turkey might be making a comeback which I hope is true but we'll see in time. Now over to some artist rumors. This is always so exciting. We are so eager to see who the different countries will send this year um, but I don't know if you know, but there's been a lot of hype around Jojo Siva that she will represent Poland because she is of Polish heritage and she has herself dropped some, not even hints or clues, but quite direct indications that she will participate in Eurovision this year. Yesterday, tomorrow, today. The response from the Eurovision community so far has not been the best and it's been quite polarized, I would say. And I get that, but we'll see if this is only a PR trick from her side, which she is very good at, or if there's actually something to it. Time will tell. This is the most exciting news I have received in long, long, long time. And that is that one of my absolute favorite artists, which I've been ranting about for a long time. It was a very distinct special. It reminded me like of Tommy Cash. I don't know if you have heard of him. And so far this gives me vibes of like, you know, Tommy Cash. And as soon as I saw Kari, I was just like, he has to do a collaboration with Tommy Cash. Tommy Cash is one of my favorite artist ever is actually going to participate in Eurovision. 
So the rumors is that Tommy Cash, and this is not, this is seems to be even more than a rumor. When we, when I spoke to ERR, the Estonian broadcaster, last year in an interview about Five Minutes and Pull Up, I told them that I hope that Tommy Cash will represent Estonia next year. Tommy Cash and Karia makes a music video together and a song together called It's Crazy It's Party. So he got introduced to the Eurovision community already then. Next, Karia opened up Five Minutes and Pull Ups uh, Euro Tour in August. And then Tommy Cash made a surprise appearance on stage. And Karia said, this is his words. What do you think? Who should, who should go to Eurovision next year? And pointed at Tommy Cash. <laughs> Further, he went on to say, Jus Klein can't win, Karia can't win, but we have Tommy. Recently, Tommy Cash has commented that he will be the representative for Estonia in Eurovision 2025. <laughs> In a recent report from one of his concerts, uh, he had an interview with RRR, ERR Media from Estonia, which is the broadcaster that represents Estonian Eurovision. And in an interview with them, he said that it was 90% confirmed that in 2025, Tommy Cash will go to Eurovision. So I'm praying this is true. Like if this is, if this is true, this has already made my Eurovision year, to be honest. I can't wait to see the concepts and what he's going to bring to Eurovision. He is a true artist, in my opinion, and I've compared him to Bambi Thug last year because I see a lot of similarities between these two artists. So my fingers are crossed that we will see Tommy Cash and I can't wait to get it finally confirmed. The last 10%. <laughs> In the end, I just would like to say that if you're new here, my name is Maria. I am a reactor, uh, among other things, here on Eurovision Norway, together with Hannah, who unfortunately couldn't be here today. Hello, everyone! Oh, I really wish that I could join Maria today, but unfortunately, I'm not at home right now. I am in Oslo. I still wanted to say hi. If you are interested in getting to know the contests and especially the national finals, this is the place to be. We do reactions, we do interviews, we go and cover Eurovision in uh, last year Malmö, this year hopefully Basel, and uh, we uh, share news and there's a lot of fun and we have a great community over here. So you're more than welcome to join us on our journey towards Basel. We also have a membership page where you can get exclusive content, see unedited reactions, do rankings over there so you can see our top 10, your, our top 3 and the different semis. You can get to know us better through our vlogs. Yeah, we and we also do exclusive Eurovision coverage on there. So if that is something you're interested in, we'd love to have you there. And uh, we also do some competitions there from time to time, so that is also worth checking out. We have so much fun planned this semester and this year in general. And also, I just really want to thank you guys for all this, um, all the support, all of those opportunities that you guys give us. And if you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe below. We will be posting a ton of content going forward and um, I can't wait to go on this journey with you guys. So I'll see you soon. Bye. And one last thing, we also have a Eurovision mug collection. This came about because I would love to start my day with a cup of coffee reminding me of my favorite songs from Eurovision. And I thought we could have our favorites from each year after a while collecting like your unique Eurovision mug collection, uh, that that would be a fun thing to have myself. 
So that's why I teamed up with uh, some artists and we're making now the Eurovision 2024 collection and it is going to be released very soon. This is a collection that includes the participating countries from the final each year. That is the artist that you can choose from and there's only 40 cups per country. It makes it a collectible, so over time we will see who has like the best uh, Eurovision mug collection. So we can vote on that in time in the time to come. But for now, go and get your 2023 mug so that you can have that in check before the 2024 collection comes because when the 2024 collection comes will which will be dropped later this uh, september then the 2023 eurovision mug collection will be unavailable forever so if you want to start building your mug collection together with me then buy yours from 2023 today and so you are ready for the next collection that's a hot tip anyway thank you so much for watching and uh, looking forward to see you again Bye.